Hello everyone, in this fourth lesson of how to make your first Unity game tutorial, we are going to write some code which will allow us to move a character around very simply in our world. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So up until now we have some very, very simple C sharp with our coin rotation. What we're going to do in this tutorial is a little bit more advanced, but we are going to be able to control, uh, at least for now, a very simple game object to move around in our scene. So first things first, let's actually add in an object that we'll be able to control. So let's go to game object, 3D object and cube. Now I'm going to set the position of this cube back to 0, 0, 0 and just bring it up to be on top of our area. I'm going to rename and have this as player and realistically all we need to do in its simplest terms is be able to assign the W, A, S and D keys to move this object around. Now there are much more complicated ways of creating a controller and we may advance this script a little further into the series if we need to but as long as we have simple movement in place we'll be able to have an actual game. So let's start by creating a new C Sharp script. Let's right click, create C Sharp script. We'll call this player controls. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. There we go. So, as I said, it's simple in terms of trying to move it around, but it is a little bit more complicated than the last tutorial that we did. But don't worry too much, I will explain everything that we need. So once again, inside the class, we do not need this start method, at least not for now. So let's get rid of it along with those two annotation lines. Now, we do kind of need a variable here. I think it's just very dependent on how quick you would like your uh, playable character to move around. So for now, I am going to declare a new variable for this. So let's have public. And I'm actually going to have this slightly different than the last time. I'm going to have this as a decimal rather than an integer. So for a decimal, we need to have the word float. So remember last time, a whole number integer was just INT. Well, this time a float, a decimal number, same thing. So we're going to call this variable move speed with a semicolon. Once again, we can change this if we need to. Uh, we probably will a little later on. But for now, let's focus on getting some key inputs to move our character around. So the way this is going to work is we're going to have some if statements, four separate if statements to detect if we are pressing W, A, S or D. And these if statements are going to contain a line of code which will tell whatever game object that this is attached to to move left, right, up or down. So let's start with the A key just because it's the most left key of the keys we're using on the keyboard. So we need to type if and then in parentheses we need to establish what we want to be the logic gate here. So we need to say if we are pressing the A key and we can use input with a capital I. Remember, capitalization is important, so it definitely is a capital I. Dot get key. And that's capital G, capital K. And now we need to say which key. So once again, in parentheses, we need to say key code dot A. And then close bracket to close the get key section and then close bracket to close the if section and then open curly bracket and hit return. So what we've done here is we have said if we are pressing key code A then execute the next few lines of code. So that's going to be whatever we type here. So if we aren't pressing A 
the line of code here will not function. It won't work at all. So what do we do to make this work? Well, we need to move left, don't we? So A is always to move left. And we need to transform whatever object this is attached to. So for example, that cube that we put in is the player. This script is going to be directly on the player. So we need to transform dot. Now, this is where things get a little bit, not complicated, but different than what you would expect. The term we need to use here is translate. And the reason we use translate is because that gives us the opportunity to move according to whatever our position is with whatever we're going to tell it to move along. So for example, if we were to just say move left at X amount of speed, as long as we're holding A, that is exactly what would happen. That's why we use translate. So transform.translate. And in brackets, we now need to tell it which way and how fast. So for example, if we wanna go super speed, we would set this as like a million or something ridiculous like that. But if we want to move at a normal speed, this would just be one or two or something like that. So to tell it the direction, we need to say vector three. And the reason we use vector three is because we are in a 3D environment. There is no other reason why. Shouldn't not really be using vector two, although theoretically you could. But honestly, because we are in a 3D environment, we should be using vector three. So vector three dot left because we want to move left and then we need to multiply that value by the time so do you remember in the last tutorial when we spoke about space dot world because we need to make it relative to the world around it well we need to make our movement relative to the passing of time so if for example you think of time as a value of one then we need to move at real time real time would also be one so whenever we do something like this, we have to make sure that it is in accordance with the time of the game. So to do that, we say time dot delta time. And now this is where we can actually place how fast we want to move. So you can think of this as, like I said, if you want to put a million here, you could if you want to put just a normal number, you can. But that is what our variable up here is for. So we would multiply by that variable, which is move speed. Close bracket and semicolon to finish off that line. So let's quickly go through what we've done here. We are checking every frame that if we are pressing a key, and if that key is A, then we do this. We move whatever object that this is attached to, to the left in real time, going this fast. So if we set that as zero, we wouldn't move. If we set it as one, we'd move at a normal speed. So let's set this as 1.5 as the move speed. So back at the variable, let's set this as 1.5. Now this will underline red. The reason it underlines red is simply because we need to put the letter F after any decimal number declaration in Unity, or rather C sharp. So the reason for that is because it's just the way it works. It's just its syntax, it's just the way it recognizes that something is a decimal number. So if you've ever typed a number that's a decimal, you get that red line, always remember to put that F after. So I'm going to save my script now, and I'm going to head back into Unity. And it is just going to compile. There we go. So now let's move this script onto this cube. And if we click it, we can see that there's our move speed. And if we press play now to go to the game view, if we press any key, you can hear me pressing keys, nothing will work. However, if we hold A, we can now move. So I'm pressing A and you can see our cube moving. However, the others do not currently work. So let's now modify our script even further to make sure those other keys do work. So back to our player control. And the great thing about this is that we can logically 
copy and paste and it will work. So if we take these four lines of code, the if statement all the way to its closing curly bracket, if we copy and paste it below, make sure we are still inside the update method, we need to change this to, let's go D with this one because we've got left, let's make this right. Great thing about this is all we need to do is type D there. And in this section down here where we have move speed, we just need an extra multiplied by negative one. The reason we have negative one there is because this all then inverts. So we're moving left at a negative speed, which would mean we're moving right. That's all there is to it in terms of math. So if I save that script now, and head back into Unity, that script on the player will automatically update. So we could press play again, move left, and then move right. So all I'm doing there is holding A and D. It's as easy as that. So now let's do the final one, which is technically forwards and backwards, or up and down, depending on what dimension you're looking at. So back into our script once again, and we can take those four lines of code once again, place them below, and this one, rather than A, is going to be W. Which means that rather than vector3.left, we would change that to vector3.forward. So hopefully, you guys, you've got the next line of code ready. We're going to copy those four down here. That's going to be changed to a D, because uh, not a D, <laughs> an S. There we go, because we already have D, obviously. And that is going to be multiplied by negative one. Save the script, and that is our basic movement script. Now, it's not perfect by any means, but for all intents and purposes, it will work absolutely perfect at this point in time. So let's head back into Unity. Let's press play and move all around. There we go. That is a nice basic movement script. Now I know moving a cube isn't exactly exciting by any standards. Um, so don't worry about it being just a cube for now. We are going to develop this a lot further and it's going to be a nice cool little character that we're going to have. Uh, wandering around. Um, so yeah, that is our basic movement in C Sharp script. And as I said, I do think we are going to advance that further on in the series as and when we need to. Uh, but right now, like I said, that basic movement is just perfect for us because we now have the makings of a game. We're moving around. Technically, this is a game already because we've created something that we can control. So Next tutorial, we are going to create a script which will allow our camera to look at our player constantly. Because at the moment, if we come down here, we can't see where our player is. We need a camera system which allows us to be able to see our player at all times. And there's a couple of different ways of doing that, so we'll be going into them. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.